Here's Brody Brazil. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to this series profiling 2023 Oakland A's players. Let's get right into number 20, Christian Pache. Ooh, I love when he did that after big plays or big moments. That's kind of his like signature thing, the, the flex right there. So let's flex on Christian Pache, who I once interviewed in Spanish in a post-game interview. It was a first for me, and I, I will always appreciate him for, like, not letting me do that, but understanding I was trying my best, and he played along quite well with it. I will always appreciate Pache for that. The basics on Christian, he'll come in opening day as a 24-year-old with one year, 31 days of big league service time. You look back at his first two years in Atlanta, of course, he came over in that big deal with Matt Olson, Shea Langleers also came to Oakland, but only 24 games played for Pache in his first two seasons with Atlanta. So this was not even a first like full, total full season with Oakland, but he played a lot more games in the big leagues than ever before. He did appear in two postseasons with Atlanta, which I do think does a lot for a young ball player. You're just coming up, you're new to this. Again, not just to be around the team, but to actually appear in postseason games, which have a totally different feel. I'm glad he's got that experience under his belt, like planted in his garden. And I hope that serves him well over, you know, years of, of, of trying to get back to that with the Oakland A's and just knowing what the end result, the, the hope is for a baseball season. It's to be in the playoffs. It's to compete for a World Series. Obviously, he did that. As part of Atlanta, he's got a World Series ring with Atlanta, just like Stephen Vogt does as well, too. Okay, we'll review Pache's 2022. He was an opening day player on the roster, started on opening day, played the first 68 games, his first 68 games in the beginning stretch of the season, but batted only 159. And he was playing fine defensively in center field. It just became evident that he was struggling at the plate, um, there were no necessarily surges or sustained portions where you saw some glimpses. And so the A's optioned him down to AAA. Uh, that happened on the 30th of June. And he spent basically a majority of the summer, well, I guess all of July, almost all of August, down with the Aviators. But then he got recalled August 28th. He came up and hit 200 in his final 23 games played. What does that mean? Was there the improvement that the A's were hoping for? There was some talk of that. They did see some changes and adjustments. The stats don't necessarily you know, spell out a night and day situation, but you hope that there was something to be gained from him going down last year, really only with the bat. There's no question about his defensive play in center field, the kind of athlete he is. They just wanted his bat to come around, maybe get some confidence, and progress a little bit down in AAA. He made 70 starts for Oakland last year, all in center field. So they've kind of made it, they've kind of carved out that niche for Pache, right? You're not on the corners. You are going to be our center fielder. And I've also just made a video on Ramon Laureano. That kind of translated into his season too last year because when he came back from suspension, the A's decided that, well, we've got Pache and Laureano, by the way. What a heck of an outfield that is. Talk about two guys with range and that can make plays out there. Two highlight reel defenders, Pache in center and Loriano in right. But they decided to keep Pache out there in center field. He only made one error in 90 games played. That put him at a 995 fielding percentage. He also was able to make some spectacular plays out there in center field, not just going back on balls, but also coming in on some diving catches too. I mentioned he went down to AAA, hit 248, four dingers, 20 RBI in 41 games with Las Vegas. So not necessarily tearing the cover off the baseball, but again, didn't struggle down there. That's the kind of thing you're hoping for is that he can make progress, get some confidence, come back, bring that back, and maybe bring it back for 2023. The real best stretch and success that he had was right out of the gate last year. Went seven for his first 23 in those first seven games with the A's. And that's what got everybody excited. Like, whoa, look at what we got here. It was just the tip of the iceberg of that Matt Olson trade. Obviously, now we've seen Shea Langoliers come up and earn probably an everyday role for this season. But it was the start that caught people's attention with Pache. Unfortunately, just could not sustain it. And yeah, last but not least... 
I, I think we're really talking about two different things here. Number one, the glove and the defense, it's great. He makes the normal routine plays. He also makes the highlight plays look routine. It's really separating that from the offense and trying to get them both at a comparable level. So 2023, there is this to know about Pache. He has no more options remaining, meaning that the A's need to have him on their opening day roster or else they'll have to put him on waivers. And I am pretty sure he would not clear those. Somebody else would pick him up, in my opinion. No question about that. So going to get that shot opening day. Hopefully it's a situation where he's now ready. He can run with this and there's no other issues. I mean, I'm literally saying gold glove with a question mark. Like, I think that's, that's a compliment. That's the type of player he could be out there in center field. But the only thing that needs to go with it is the bat to have some progress, to make some strides. Look, I'm not asking you to hit 320 this upcoming season, but find a role, gain some, some confidence with the offense um, and a spot where he can produce. I think that'd be great. And look, last but not least, I think Christian Pache is a platform guy. What do I mean by that? Let me let me use a comparison here. I feel like, and Yoannis Cespedes never really took advantage of this entirely. And he kind of uh, struggled after he left the A's too. But a platform guy, a, a player with some flash, a player kind of with a little bit of a brand, an image, and a way of you know, expressing himself. And and I just, like, I see so much potential. There's just something about Christian Pache, right? Do you feel that way too? The, he could be something so special here in Oakland. He's already got the defensive side and the highlight reel side. Have the bat come around, kind of fill in that that space. And he's a, he's a guy with a platform. You feel that too? It's hard for me to exactly translate my thoughts on this, but I guess the real big thing is potential for Pache. Let's hope he reaches the next step of it here in 2023. Yeah, it's that, right? It's that thing. Christian Pache, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you out there, buddy. This has been my 23 profile on number 20. Thumbs up on the video if you enjoyed it. Also, subscribe to the channel since you're here, since you like A's content. I've got lots more coming out in the very near future. I'll see you next time.